In today's video, we'll be bringing you eye to eye with the Dungeons & Dragons icon, a being so revered his reputation precedes it, striking fear into even the bravest and experienced of heroes, the Beholder. This poster boy of Dungeons & Dragons has been stalking us since the first edition, and creating a memorable encounter worthy of such an intelligently warped mind can be a challenge. But fear not, today we'll be building an encounter you can pick up and place directly into your campaign. Nothing quite screams fantasy more than a horrifying floating eyeball monster. However, the Beholder is much more than just a sack of hit points, and it's worth taking the time to familiarise yourself with them before diving into the encounter. One of the reasons behind the Beholder's success within Dungeons & Dragons is their uniqueness. These aberrations are created from the warped mind of another Beholder through their dreams, which allows any number of personality traits to exist. From Xanathar, the devious crime lord who loves luxury and pleasures, to Large Luigi, a knowledge-hungry, lawful, neutral bartender and the owner of the Happy Beholder. Most will hunger for knowledge, wealth or power over others. Sometimes it's all three. The Beholders are highly intelligent, vicious and distrusting of others, even their own kind, providing a really fun layer of paranoia to be utilised by the DM and maybe even your players. The Beholder's striking visual appearance leaves an everlasting impression on us. Their large central eye and numerous eye stalks ever watching. However, the rest of the Beholder can really be any colour or shape. Not forgetting what we mentioned earlier, they are born or from dreams. So who's to say one couldn't be created from a blood-curdling, bone-snapping nightmare, creating obtuse bone structures that pierce through the blood-dripping black skin, while another was from a dream of lavish feasts, creating a head in the shape of a chicken drumstick? Only your imagination is the limit here. A beholder's mentality and connection with the dream world are so strong that some can even change their own appearance, and this is a really fun area we'll be leaning into for this encounter. Now back to its eye, and the first one we'll be talking about is the big one. The Beholder's large, bulbous eye emits a 150-foot cone of anti-magic, meaning spells cannot be cast, summoned creatures disappear, and even magical items use their power within its gaze. However, it's their 10 eye stalks that will really cause chaos. Each one provides a different magical effect such as charm, slow, petrification, or worse, death, and these are to be rolled at random, without using the same eye stalk twice. During battle, describe these rays as colours shown on the monster's stat block. That way your players will learn each one and begin to wince before it's even hit them. Not only do they get three of these per turn, the Beholder also has three legendary actions to use each round, all of which are using another eye stalk attack, totalling in potential six eye stalk attacks per round. It is worth mentioning that the Beholder's anti-magic ray can be moved each round, or even turned off. However, it will counteract any magical effects from its own eye rays too, so be careful where you place it. Beholders will generally create layers themselves, concocting a maze of circular tunnels in any direction from its powerful disintegration eye. The ceiling will be high and the rooms wide to assist the Beholder in battle, when needed thus providing it with plenty of room to stay out of the melee range and make the most of its anti-magic eye. To add to this, the Beholder also has some truly awesome and very dangerous lair actions worth utilising in battle. Once per round on Initiative 20, the lair can manifest one of these three effects. 1. The ground becomes slimy, turning into a difficult terrain. 2. The walls grow appendages that will attempt to grapple players and hold them in place. 3. An eye will appear on a solid surface shooting a random eye beam at any creature the Beholder can see. The area surrounding the lair will become warped by the Beholder's unnatural presence creating one or both of these regional effects. 1. Creatures will feel like they are being watched, even though they are not. A fantastic and impactful way to make players nervous. 2. While the Beholder sleeps, the surrounding area can be warped by dreams for 24 hours. For example, alien trinkets appear where there were none before, strange phrases and pictures scratched onto the surface, the colour or feel of the walls, floor and ceiling subtly change, all leading to your players becoming confused and curious. We have broken this down into smaller, simplest digest segments. These will be 1. Zalth Shirosh the Beholder 2. Setting up the encounter 3. The Lair 4. The Battle 5. Rewarding players and 6. What's next and the possible risks. Let's introduce you to the Beholder for this adventure, Zalf Shirosh. It has literally spent decades following his dreams. He is naturally self-righteous to the extent that he believes himself to be a god, a god who believes his dreams are prophecies, all of which revolve around him. The first vision came to him once when he was fully grown at 10 years old, where he came across an illithid. 
attempting to capture and understand it, it somehow connected him to the elder brain, the hive mind of Illithid City. The mental connection awoke something in his mind, the reality, knowledge and history of the Illithids, smashing into Zalthurolster's dreams. This Illithid, now petrified of one of its many trophies, will be his tool for motivation and the connection to his dreams. Scared and jealous of the knowledge and the power the elder brain held, he decided to escape the realm and find a level playing field for him to learn his craft. To do so, he had to find a way to plane shift. Through his dreams he discovered a gem of pure conjuration magic. With this he used hundreds of Kaotai and promised these long lost wizards now turned into inexplicable horrors. An opportunity to scourge the material plane by offering them the power to plane shift. Zalsharosh knew a world of these horrors would not last long and be turned into eternal darkness. Darkness and silence would only slow his progress to become better than an elder brain, a god. Therefore, it used their magical essences to act as an anchor to a plane shift machine, trapping them within a gigantic dark crystal which he broke into five pieces, one for each teleportation circle. Though his dreams was able to alter the design and essence of gemstones, helping it to modify the teleportation circles, increasing their safety and protection. There was a downfall to his success. The further it developed these colonies and instilled himself as their god, the dreams it presented with all to his form into what he pretends to be. He sees that as an infliction against his superior form, and due to its solitude can only remove the curse when those in front of it no longer believe in the dream. Now for Zalfshirol's motivations. Cobbles and Orgs is where it began. When arriving on the material plane, it had learned from these two races combined that mankind believes itself to be the true ruler of this plane and they will be his next experiment. Either his new minions can infiltrate the human and place a sixth piece of the black gem in one of their cities, providing him the ability to teleport there, or maybe some adventurers would do his bidding. So what does our beholder look like? Zalfshirolsh's body has been ripped into a new frame after his latest projects. The kobold form has slowly been removed and replaced with a vision of Grunch, the ten-foot orc god of war. Kobold wings and feet still remain, but his body and face represent the orc. An eye patch covers one eye while the other comes away from his skull as if connected by an eye stalk. To cover the remainder of the beholder mass, a dark purple dreamscape extends from its form. A keen eye will also notice that although its feet move while walking, they never truly touch the ground. It will see the party as minions, always in his grasp and willing to do his bidding. If they choose to ignore, slander or attack, South Shirolsha's dreamscape will shatter away, exposing its true form. Once in true form, it will celebrate the release of the cursed dreams that laid upon him, and if it sees the attacker's fear written on their faces, it will gleefully laugh at their weakness and attack. This encounter is built for four level 10 players or lower level if you have more players. We have played this out with six level 7 players. Although difficult and two members died, it was still a very memorable encounter. For this adventure to work, we will need to place the Beholder's Lair somewhere within the mountainscape or underground where the Orcs and Kobolds are plentiful. By this point, Zalfshirolsh has given up on the Kobolds and is only using them to gather supplies. The Orcs are the main threat to the adventurers now, and stories of them attacking small towns near the mountain pass will be rife, enough to get the local Duke concerned and begin arming nearby military outposts. To get our heroes stuck into this adventure, they will either hear one of the following rumours, be involved in inciting action or even better, include into one of your players' backstories. News of the villages and towns ransacked by an orc army of Grumsh and the locals being taken captive. This could be one of your players' hometown and a family member has been kidnapped, maybe even petrified by the beholder. A vision of a wanted MacGuffin your players will want that points towards the orcs. Or my favourite, have the players stumble upon a gnomish festival in the forest. Give them a good time playing some games, interacting with potential allies and eating strange mushrooms before orcs attack and kidnap the now beloved gnomes. Any news of the orc should be coupled with seeing the red banner and black eye marking of the Grumsh, the orc god of war. These will create a trail for your party to follow back to the orc camp, where they will need to watch prisoners and objects being magically lifted into a 40 foot wide hole in the ceiling that is 15 foot high. Either your party can be one of those offerings, if captured by the army, or see the ones they wish to save being pulled up. Either way, provide your party with the tools to get up there. Boots of levitation, climb kits, slippers or spider climbing, or even some flying potions. If they get stuck, then feel free to cause them to magically lift up, just like those they witnessed before and unable to stop it. Now they are in the Beholder's Lair. As mentioned before, the Beholder's Lair will consist of not only horizontal corridors, 
but also vertical ones, along with rooms of varying descriptions, such as dedicated rooms to some of its current and previous minions that have been altered by dreams. Orcs, rock stone walls, illusionary fire with cooking utensils, stone and straw bed, plus an eye of grump shrine. Tieflings, redstone walls, four poster bed with black silky sheets, a mannequin wearing tiefling designed armor, and a small food prep area including glasses, herbs and extremely hot peppers. Illithids, turquoise and pink fleshy circular room with alien shaped furniture and a small black pool. Zalfsharolsh is also a very hungry beholder, and material plain flesh doesn't quite cut it. Therefore, it needs to access its favourite meat, abyssal chicken. Include a coop underground accessible by a hole. No doubt your players will want to stick their head in for a look. Traps are very important here. Even a simple one such as an ooze slipping out of a rock to attack the party. One worth throwing in as it involves an element of the beholder itself is the acid pit of dispel. A 50 foot long pit filled with acid with the opposite platform, 15 foot higher than where the party stands. Halfway along the pit and hidden due to the alteration in the ceiling height are two gems that will dispel any magical effect once passed. A creature that falls into the acid will take 2d10 acid damage each round, however the gems themselves can be dispelled or removed by the players if they can reach them. We would recommend placing this close to the main lair of Zalsuros as it makes your players second guess the potential flea from the beholder. The main chamber of the lair will be the highest point of the dungeon along with the trophy and treasure rooms. A long rectangular room, ideally no smaller than 60 by 100 foot to ensure its eye ray can reach all areas. From the ceiling of the main chamber dangles a large black crystal held in place by four iron chains that have been melded into four five foot thick stone columns, good for your players to take cover behind. Closer inspection of the gem will notice symbiotic humanoid shapes moving against the edges of the gem. This is indeed the coyote that Zalthrosh has trapped. Below this gem on the ground is a magical glyph containing five of the gems of varying colour, each sat with smoothed divot that holds the gem in place. These circle around an empty divot in the centre of the glyph, which is where the activation stone will need to go. The activation stone being the black gem placed within the band upon one of Zalsterolsa's eye stalks. Each gem matches a plane of existence, e.g. red for Fire Realm, pink for Feywild and so on. And once the activation stone is set in place, any of the other gems can be pressed to open a portal to that plane of existence. Feel free to let your players spend some time here trying to work it out, for this is where Zalsteros steps in. Now before we go any further, Zalsteros's last resort is to attack the party, for it would prefer to use the adventurers to further expand its own experiment. In its mind, they are a tool to be utilised and killing them doesn't provide any positives. As mentioned earlier, his form is currently warped, and as soon as your players disregard him as any type of god, his form will snap back and initiative will commence. Within battle, keep Zalsteros out of the melee range, ideally high up in a corner like a security camera. And when it comes to its turn, it has three eye rays to fire, which are rolled at random with a D10, with any duplicates re-rolled. Beholders are highly intelligent, so use their rays effectively by aiming at targets least likely to succeed. Strength, Telekinetic Ray, Dexterity, Slowing Ray, Petrification Ray, Disintegration Ray, Death Ray, Constitution, Paralyzing Ray, Innovation Ray, Wisdom, Charm Ray, Fear Ray, Sleep Ray. It now has three legendary actions each round to use, and instead of just attacking the players who just went, it will use its randomly selected eye ray against those most susceptible to it. Its bite attack will only ever be a last resort against those who have succeeded against its rays and have gotten into melee range. There is no reason for your beholder to fly in head first or eye first and get itself into a melee fight. With beholders being very territorial, they will always fight to the death while in its lair. Unwilling to succumb to the idea that it can be the second best for death, it would be a welcoming in the face of embarrassment. Also, on initiative count 20, the beholder uses a lair action. If one or more of the PCs is charging in to fight the beholder up close, it favours slippery slime. If one or more of the PCs is near a wall, it favours grabby appendages. If neither of the situations apply or it's already used its only favoured lair action on its previous turn, it chooses a random wall eye. Now if your players manage to defeat this incredible boss then it goes without saying they should be showered in loot. Maybe that MacGuffing is here under a banner of the Eye of Grumsh within the Beholder's Lair, the same one your players saw in their dream. With that being said, this is also a perfect time to gift your players a keep or even a castle for saving the local population from an orc army, although your players may still need to come up with a way to stop them. 
What's next for the players and potential risks? This encounter is by no means easy and providing your players with the tools to succeed is on the DM. Build them up to this point with items that might counteract some of the Beholder's abilities, such as Basilisk Oil that can remove petrification, an Arrow of Aberration, Slaying or even NPCs to help them along the way. This will be a memorable moment at your table, one that players will never forget, even if they do succumb to death. And if they do, then you have a new adventure already set up for the next bunch of plucky heroes, defeat Zalsarosh, the God of War. If your players were lucky enough to survive and come away with bountiful loots, this adventure leaves you open to many possibilities. Access the other planes via the Beholder's Teleporter. What will the players do with the Coyote held within the Dark Gem? One of his trophy may be someone of importance that can grant the players a new story arc, good or bad. So there you have it, fellow travellers, an adventure with a Beholder ready to be picked up and thrown into your campaign. If you've had any great experiences with Beholders, be sure to leave a comment below. And if you choose to use this adventure, please let us know how it went. Until next time, 